So what do you think is the main cause of air pollution and ocean pollution in Hong Kong? Um, I think if you go on to the website, our website Clear the Air, you should be able to get a pretty good picture, okay? The shipping industry is a big part. I mean, with all these heavy guns moving around the harbor. And um, without denying it at all, one of the uh, unwanted source is from Shenzhen. They oh. blew over. Okay. What the heck you want? Yeah. And if you want to, if you take a look at some of the haziness of uh, uh, air quality, from time to time, whenever the air blows, Hong Kong shivers. It, it, the suffering is uh, passive. Give you another example of this kind of a telecommunication. Okay. Not too long ago, you can date back this uh, roughly three decades ago. If you go to Toronto, you go to the mountains, which I have visited myself, you see this beautiful blues, uh, blue water, lake after lake. There's no fish in there. Because all the industry that are grown in Boston area, uh, Penn, uh, Penn State, uh, you know, the, if you go to East Coast, up in north, northeast of East uh, East Coast, all the heavy industries, the air shoots up and take a quick ride and dump it right into those lakes. Oh wow! It's called the jet uh, uh, through the jet. Okay. You know, the air is a column of air that goes up, okay, and it actually took a train, went back to Toronto, up in north and down. Oh, and it so they, it. You, you remember the days when they talk about acid rain. Mm -hmm. When the pH of the whole lake turns pH 5, you got a problem. Okay? And you got a major problem. So there's no fish. Things could not so th this, this might still be continuing, might still be a problem. Give you another example how it was dealt with. And today, I think China, Hong Kong, and uh, and a lot of restaurants need to really relearn and re-educate ourselves and start legislate. Stop just talking. Do things. Give you some solid example. The uh, um, when I started as a chemist in the seventies. One of our uh, classmates, my earlier uh, classmates, came back and gave us lectures. And it turns out he's the on-hand chemist <clears throat> that are responsible for building a lot of, uh, like, dull chemical, for example, and built a, uh, a scrubler column. You know what scrublers are? No. It's just a tube that stick up in the air where the things discharged from industry will go through this column. So like a filter? It's like a filter, but they got this ping pong balls inside. It's oh. the scrubbles and condenses. Get all the liquid, you know, just uh, dis supposedly discharge as, as, let's say, sulfur dioxide, SO2. Okay? It will get collected on the balls as a liquid. It'll run down. Okay? They might even recover this uh, sulfuric acid to prevent Okay, to prevent acid lake phenomenon. But that's just a schematic. Now, the, uh, as we go in, uh, in the details, I'll tell you why we should all learn, okay, and relearn how to do scrapling. Because there are existing technology that's already four to five decades old that have improved considerably through the years. There's no excuse to tell me that you can't do it. We're just not recovering. We are particularly concerned about air, and uh, I say we got we we do more than just trying to get rid of stale or bad air. Okay, because these chemicals we are talking about are not only harmful to environment. Okay, 
worst of uh, worst of them all. It's extremely harmful to uh, uh, human health. Okay. As time goes on, I would uh, let you see more. Um, today. Yeah, that actually that perfectly goes with my next question. Um, how are these issues affecting Hong Kong's Hong Kong people's quality of life, physically, socially, and mentally? <laughs> no joke. <laughs> Let me stop by saying that um, Joe Biden is not my idol, okay? He's a politician. I actually happen to, uh, to talk to him many times myself. He's Vice President of the United States. Yes, sir. He used to be a, a, a governor. Uh, I think he's from Maryland. But uh, nevertheless, he and I interacted many, many times. Um, but he came up with the, one of the few days I think he's very positive on. The developing world needs a cancer moonshot. Okay, this is a today's, uh, maybe it's the most recent thing. You might want, uh, you're going to receive the right, uh, email, so you, you got this whole thing. You can go dig into this, you will find, okay, uh, Hong Kong people not only are subjected to the uh, polluted air from uh, Shenzhen. Is equally and more dangerously so damaged without knowing, without Hong Kong people being uh, uh, informed. See, in th this is the whole key. Hong Kong people were not informed of the danger of this polluted air. This is air, isn't it? Right. Can you see it? No. <laughs> Can you touch it? No. Okay, you couldn't. Okay, and yet we go out to the to the street. Okay, you're attacked through your eyes, your cornea, your nostrils, and your mouth, as well as your skin. Okay, you notice how dirty your nose can become right. if you're exposed to the outside air long enough, and depending where you have been. This we're not talking about dust. We're talking this very minute, 150. 200 micron, uh, not micron, uh, nanometers, nanometers, 10 to the minus 9th meters. They're so small, they can actually go up uh, 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 your lung. We're not talking about penetration through your body, I'm talking about it actually goes up, okay? Enters your nostrils. It actually sticks there and crawl inside, okay? Yeah, it might get into your brain. And you, people might think, you must be joking. I am not joking at all. And in just the past two weeks, okay, there are articles coming out. But before I get into that area, that okay? <laughs> it is, okay? So I'll wake you up. Yeah, well, this is good. This will inform all of our readers. Yes, I hope uh, you will write a good article on that. <laughs> because there is so much material I'm going to give to you. Perfect. Okay, that from so uh, Clear the Air, you will see. Now, this is a...